Guilty as charged. But before we go any further, let's first establish what your dares to dream means by that. Since we have already established in the chapter before how my definitions are all screwed up, as yours truly is from some other planet. Per your dares to dreams dictionary, flirting and verbal flirting at that strictly alludes to platonic just plain simple being sincerely nice, showering sincere compliments, just brightening someone's day, bringing a smile to someone's face, sharing a laugh. It has to do with using your freedom of expression, your freedom of speech for the betterment of the society. That's what it all boils down to, making this world a better place to live. And it's a thing you do to strangers. Yeah, maybe you heard someone say, we spent our ninth marriage anniversary flirting all day. Or, we spent nine days in Hawaii flirting all the way through our honeymoon. Wow, that can get pretty redundant past one point. You gotta do more than just that. When done true to its definition, no, it doesn't make one doubt your sexual orientation. It makes both parties involved happy, and it's very healthy. While at it, you kind of break some ice there as well. So it makes for a much more congenial environment to thrive. It's also the next logical step in a relationship. Strangers and flirting, and hopefully things get to the next stage. We'll talk more about the platonic yet playful way of demonstrating interest, and that has prospects of getting romantic, even sexual, when we talk of flirting in the non-verbal sense two chapters from now. Just hang in there for me. Coming back to the topic at hand, I won't stop being nice to women for the fear of someone questioning my sexuality. Nothing can deter me from doing what I want to, as long as it is legal. What can I say? Yours truly is a law-abiding alien. Speaking of women, God's beautiful creations. There's no excuse for not being nice to women. Women should be made to feel great about themselves. There's so much we have to go through. We give life, we make tons of sacrifices, we keep families together. We are God's beautiful creation from the outside and within. You're always wanted. Meaning we are so high in demand. Kids want us for how lovingly caring we are. FFs want us for the trusted confidants we are. BFs or prospective spouses want us for how beautifully seductive we are. The list goes on and on. That's one reason to be exceptionally nice to women for our noble and infinite contributions to the society. Think about it. If women weren't there, there'd be no society. Men would cease to exist if women weren't there to bring them into this world. And yet, where I originate from, after marriage, we had to leave our parents, move in with completely strange in-laws. I mean, move in with complete strangers. Including the husband, who is in most cases also a stranger. We had to leave our neighborhood, many times the city we grew up in, had childhood friends we went to school with. And if that wasn't enough, we also had to change our names. Why do we have to change everything about ourselves? If it is love, shouldn't the other person want me just the way I am? No change? Real life is nowhere close to the soulful lyrics of nothing is gonna change by love for you. You don't have to change a thing. I love you just the way you are. Nope. It's more like, you are the one who wants to get married, so you change everything about yourself, so we can be happy ever after. That's convenient. Another reason to be nice to women is, despite how great we are, and in spite of the sacrifices we make, we don't even have the right to make the choices for ourselves, whether to keep a child. When my best friend, my alter ego, let's name her, knows too much, she knows too much about me. When knows too much and I were minors, she got pregnant and had an abortion. I grew up in a very small town. Small not only by the virtue of its size, as people generally tend to know each other through some other. Small also because of the age-old thought process of the individuals of the society. Sadly, that was me back then. To top that, I went to a Catholic convent school in my formative years and all through my teens, 
for over a decade, where the Catholic nuns, or the sisters as we address them, hammered away at the concept of pro-life. So when no so much informed me of the choice she had made for herself, I was so repelled by the thought of her taking a life. I never said that to her out loud. No so too much. If I were in your place, I would have done exactly the same. And I know you'd have given me your unwavering support. I feel so guilty about it now, thinking in that fashion at that time. However, now it dawns on me that it was only for knows too much to make that choice for herself. Not for me, not for anyone else. Now to argue the other side of the coin, if my mom was to do the same, I wouldn't even be here. And we are walking on eggshells when we talk of pro-choice or pro-life. But circumstances are never the same for everyone. Neither does one size fit all. Pro-choice or pro-life, that choice is every woman's her own to make. Not anyone else's and certainly not the political party's. And today in July 2016, we celebrate the first woman ever to become the presidential nominee of a major political party. Considering a century ago, women couldn't even vote. Meaning we didn't even have the right to choose who'd govern. Makes sense. If you don't have the right to choose, you don't get to choose who will make the choices. Period. At this rate, we just have to wait another hundred years or so and we'll have equal pay. I'm positive. It's a progressive society. Who knows, I'd still be there. And we talk about this in episode 9 of season 99. Don't go anywhere. Jokes of us, the least I can do and will continue to do is to be nice to all members of my species. Someone has to make us feel great about ourselves. Even if that means we do that to ourselves on our own. So to all the members of my dear species, if you are going through a challenging phase in your life, know that you are not alone. Your dear to dream is always here for you with a listening ear. What can I say? I'm a very good listener. I got used to it, as I was talking a lot to myself. As to where did I learn to flirt from? <laughs> what can I say? It's in yours to lease blood. You're born flirt or not. No one can teach you how to become one. In closing, here's a hymn for you, Ellie, that I learned in school. And I'm not very good at this, so please bear with me. Give me joy in my heart, keep me breathing.